let's go ahead and switch over. We're going to talk about which Gundam you should watch first. Uh, so this is a panel for those interested in anime. I'm sorry, interested in Gundam. And you may already have seen some Gundam. You may already be familiar with Gundam. But it's still kind of a large franchise. Kind of a large franchise. There's a lot out there. Um, there are 17 TV series and 11 OVAs just in kind of the main what Gundam is kind of a time slot or, or uh, region there. That does not c count like all the SD Gundam series, doesn't count all of the like goofy off things. Um, it's, a, it's a big franchise. So we're going to have that be a, a thing. Um, and we're going we're gonna to talk about some recommended starting points for Gundam. So feel free to... Uh, Ask questions as we go. A um, few quick notes. I love Gundam. Gundam's a, b a big thing uh, here for me. So this is not going to be a... I'm not going to be, like, um, ragging on Gundam series here. Um, this is going to be very much a recommendation panel. Um, also, again, if you have a question, please raise your hand and ask it Im immediately because none of us are... Uh, can keep an, a thought in our head long enough to like wait till the end. Go ahead and just post that in the chat, and I will address it as we go. I I'm pretty good at that now. Uh, all right. So the first Gundam I'd actually recommend starting with, depending, is the original Mobile Suit Gundam from 1979. And the reason I suggest that is a possibility uh, is because it is the first Gundam series, and so there's a lot there to. Um, to recommend it because you are starting at the beginning. You are getting that idea of here is what Gundam is, um, here's where all these tropes started. Right? It's very helpful to go back to the very beginning on a lot of these things. And original Gundam does a couple of things. Um, first thing is it is what we call hard science fiction, right? where it tries to be fairly grounded in its future technologies. Um, the Gundam is presented more as a war machine than as a big, awesome machine that I can jump into and that has, you know, 500 missiles in it somewhere. Uh, you know, in all of these things, they, they, they try to kind of make it grounded, where, like, there's a technical manual. There are limitations. You know, you run out of ammo. Uh, all of those things are true in original Gundam. Um, so it's, it's interesting to see it from that perspective. Most other Gundam series are similar, but are, um, some of them just aren't quite as hard science fiction, if you will. Um, in fact, it's so hard science fiction, it's considered what's called a real robot, uh, anime, meaning that the, uh, the Gundam is actually, um, do a quick adjustment there, there we go, uh, meaning that the Gundam is treated as a real machine, as something coming out of a military industrial complex, as opposed to a, an awesome invention made by somebody's inventor uncle in their basement lab underneath Mount Fuji, right? Uh, this is actually a, a, a real thing. So if you hear the term real robot, this is the anime it comes from. Um, so it kind of invents that, which is, which is pretty interesting. Um, um, it also has, uh, it also establishes this standard uh, that the show is set on a specific uh, ship, in this case White Base, which is kind of this, uh, this carrier that the Gundam is on, and you get to follow the characters through that, which is actually a really smart decision, because you get a larger cast of all of the crew on board White Base, not just the pilots, right? And not just other kind of pe people, you get to see all the folks who are um, transporting that and defending it and all the other military things going on compared to say Gundam Wing, which I love Gundam Wing beyond all reason, but because they're all in separate places in their Gundams, it's a little harder to, to follow. You know, everyone's kind of separated out and doing their things. So that becomes kind of an, an interesting element of that. Again, it makes the show a little, a little easier to follow. Um, you've also got Amaro, who, boy, that's an interesting character. Um, Amaro Ray is, um, he's got a lot of things to talk about with. Amaro is a focused person. <laughs> he gets really centered and focused on things like technology and inventing things and repairing things. Not so much as people around him. 
um, and really his environment in general just kind of doesn't care about much. Um, some have put Amaro on the spectrum, and I think that is uh, not inaccurate. I think you could, you could certainly make that, that, that argument we have in the past. Uh, and so what's interesting about Amaro is that he is not your typical anime <coughs> protagonist, not partic your particular shonen protagonist. He is out there um, uh, doing this because he has to, not because he wants to. He does not have the shonen fighting spirit at all, period. He is just um, kind of forced into this in a lot of ways. Um, think Shinji from Evangelion, where you know not your, you know he is not uh, your your he's not Goku, right? Uh, very much a a unique protagonist for a character, but also more realistic, right? You most people would not just jump into the into a an unlocked you know war machine in the middle of a battle just because they can. Um, let's see here. Um, yeah, because nobody ever locks their mecha in anime. You can always just jump into any giant robot that you want to to be a part of, which is, which is kind of nice. Um, Original Gundam also has the Gundam slap, um, the, the bright slap. And this is important because I think it is one of the more pivotal moments in anime in general. The main character, Amuro Ray, decides that he doesn't want to pilot anymore. And to be clear, basically, um, he's... Out in the open, when a a battle starts, he decides to jump into the the Gundam, the, the big war machine that's kind of laying there, and pilots it to try to stop the folks who are are attacking. Um, reasonable kind of thing to try to do, but then he becomes the, the default pilot. Like there's no one else to pilot it. He has now actually done it f once, so they bring him on as the pilot. He's a very reluctant pilot. Uh, he does so because if he doesn't, he dies. You know, like literally, like, you know, if he doesn't jump in there when people attack, then the people attacking will just blow them up. So that is a perfectly reasonable thing to do that. And after a while, he just gets tired of doing that. He wants to stop. And so he announces to the captain, I'm just not going to do it anymore. The captain comes down to talk to him, has his conversation, and uh, Amaro continues to uh, uh, refuse. Whereupon, the captain literally backhands Amaro, and uh, Amaro falls back with the now famous line, you hit me, my own father never even hit me. And Captain Bright then says basically, well, you need to grow up real fast. Like, maybe if you've gotten punished more often, you know, you'd understand what's going on here, and you need to grow up and face kind of reality. This was a big turning point in, in anime because um, being the main character was not fun, right? It, it is a responsibility that you're taking on, and it's a very harsh kind of reality compared to a lot of other uh, uh, anime series and, and stuff out there. So very interesting kind of take on all that stuff. Um, let's see here. Um, and Gundam in general is about reluctant fighters. Like, most of the the folks on white base are not fighting because they want to, it's because they were caught in the middle of this battle and they are kind of doing the best they can. They are often stymied and pushed into difficult situations despite uh, what they want to do. And that makes an interesting story, right? When your characters are all kind of forced in, into doing things and have to confront the question of why am I doing this thing? Um, and how can I find satisfaction in that? That's an interesting sort of situation. So if you like those sorts of, of, of stories, that's kind of what you get in this original Gundam series. Um, not a lot of joy <laughs> in, uh, in the situation, but um, complex storylines. You also get um, Char, and Char is awesome. Um, Char is your masked blonde antagonist who will show up a lot in other Gundam series. Uh, but he's also remarkable because he is a very well-respected person in universe. He's a very noble person uh, to his men uh, and to the soldiers who fight with him in universe. And you see that. Not a lot of other antagonists in anime series come across as well as Char. Char, you, you, you understand why people would be loyal to Char. Um, and so seeing a noble enemy is a very interesting thing, especially for, for this, this time of, of, of uh, 
uh, this period in anime. Um, you also get to see things from the perspective of the, of the bad guys, and they're not all jerks. Like to that point about Char, most of the the folks on the like the bad guy side in original Gundam are reasonable people. Um, some are jerks, some aren't. Some people on the good side are jerks, and some aren't. And so it's this very even-handed view on on war and people, and it just makes for a more interesting show when you can you can, if not root for, still appreciate and understand where all these people are coming from. Uh, it's not xenophobic aliens. It's just people. It's people in a war. And you get all kinds of people in a war. Um, Original Gundam also introduces the, the concept of new types, which we'll talk about a little later on in, in the presentation. But the idea that you can actually have these sort of somewhat extrasensory powers as a pilot um, something that you don't see in all Gundam series, uh, but if you like that kind of thing, you get it here. Uh, that said, late 70s. Art can be a little rough sometimes. Uh, drawings are not always like incredibly detailed or incredibly on model. Uh, if you look closely here, like most of the, uh, the elements in this are just kind of a little wonky in terms of where all the lines line up. It happens sometimes in original Gundam. Uh, and that is generally a thing that is true in this era of anime. And I'm not here to judge, right? There are certainly people who have a tough time with that kind of old school style of anime, especially that old, and um, find that roughness hard to watch. I will say I'm not necessarily a fan of all of that sort of um, roughness of animation. I did get used to it after watching a few episodes. You, know, you, you do kind of... Um, adjust yourself to that style of animation but if you're looking at this and going i don't know if i can handle that fair enough right that that could be a reason to kind of pull away from original gundam but that is certainly an option if you want to get into gundam would be the original mobile suit gundam series uh so that is that is one um now later on as gundam got more popular they split off into multiple different timelines and so just so you know uh, the TV series were all set in new timelines, new universes, while much of the OVAs, the miniseries, uh, direct-to-video, were done back in the original timeline of original Gundam. So some of these things we'll talk about are new timelines, some of them are not. Uh, that is a thing in Gundam, so just be aware of that. I need to update this. This is like a, an old timeline now, just realizing that the, the, the background of this slide. Um... So another option to start off with would be Gundam 8th MS Team. This is another Gundam in the original Universal Century timeline. Um, and this is notable for being a, one of the most grounded realistic of the Gundam anime series. It is about, well, frankly, just grunts on the ground, like normal people um, in this war. Now, they do have mecha, but the mecha are more just like, they're like, they're like a tank squadron or a helicopter squadron, right? These are not aces out there in the most possible advanced machines on the very front lines. They're off, you know, in a corner somewhere, kind of holding their ground in a certain, you know, kind of out-of-the-way spot in the war. Um, so you can really see things from the perspective of these folks who are um, not special in that sense. Now, it's anime, so they have a certain amount of protagonism, if you will. They're, they have a certain amount of specialness to their character and kind of what they do, but um, these are not folks who are going out and winning the war all on their own, right? They, they are more just, you know, the eighth MS team, right? <laughs> not the first MS team uh, doing that. And that's very interesting, right? Seeing things from the perspective of folks who are not the shonen protagonists. Um, really cool, really interesting, and it's relatively short, right? It's an OVA, so you're going to get through that fairly quickly. Um, it's, you know, it's a a one evening, two evening kind of experience as opposed to doing, you know, a 50 episode anime series. Do, do, do. Why is my, why are my slides being un unhappy? Uh, other advantage is very high quality animation. Uh, they had a, a big budget here and you really see it. There's a lot of fairly iconic Gundam shots actually in 8th MS team. Uh, the visuals are just really, really um, striking and um, powerful, like they, they they thought about what it would be like 
to be in a jungle with these huge machines. There's a sense of scale. There's a sense of destructiveness that you get in this because it's not in space where they're just, you know, distant explosions, right? Um, and so that really comes across really well in that. And so with the higher budget of a late 90s anime, that really comes through. So if you're looking for something like that, it's really, you know, that's what you're going to get here. Um, I'd also recommend Gundam Seed. Now, thankfully, times have changed. Because when Gundam Seed came out in America, there was a lot of uh, backlash against Gundam Seed that I think was undeserved. Uh, there was uh, folks just, I, don't, I think they just really didn't get Gundam Seed, and they were a little... Uh, um, a little peevish about various stuff. But I love Gundam Seed when it came out, and I think it's a really uh, effective introduction to the franchise in general. Um, also interesting because it's about genetic engineering and a race war. Uh, <laughs> like it's, it's, it hits some interesting topics here. Um, and I'm just realizing I have completely the wrong logo. Um, the completely the wrong uh, panel title. Let me fix that real quick. That's, that's a little embarrassing. Uh... One second. There we go. We will just switch that over. Um, but yeah, um, in the universe of Gundam Seed, you can genetically engineer your child, and you can decide what that child will will their you know their strength, their intelligence, all those various elements. You can determine uh, b you know before birth, and that has created the. Um, a, a whole separate, essentially, breed of humans called coordinators who have embraced this, and they are multiple generations of folks who are genetically engineered to be objectively superior to naturals, those who are not genetically engineered. And this has created, like, this schism in humanity because not only is this a philosophical schism, coordinators are stronger, faster, and they have a higher IQ. Period. Like, you can measure this. So it is not just a, an ideological difference. Folks are actually concerned about this objective difference in humanity. Like, this, this has consequences in day-to-day -day life for people. And that becomes kind of one of the big groundings of, of, of the conflict in Gundam Seed. And so if you're interested in kind of those more high-concept, more complicated uh, topics... Seed does uh, address that to some extent. Also interesting because you have this complicated relationship between somebody on the, the good guys and the bad guy side, if you will. The protagonist's best friend is one of the antagonists on the other side. They ended up on two different parts of the war. So I think the classic kind of American Civil War story of, you know, um, uh, a war between brothers, right? It's that kind of a concept. These two people care about each other very closely, but they end up on opposite sides of the war, and they have to fight each other. That sucks. And it's a very interesting kind of a story to kind of uh, uh, ex explore and um, see what's going on there and, and see what, it, what, what impact that has on the story and the characters. Uh, so that's Gundam Seed. Um, again, interesting series. I will also point out that one of the advantages of Gundam Seed is it has a more... Um, modern art style compared to earlier Gundam series. So if you're looking for a more like digital style, you will get that more in Gundam Seed than you will in you know, some of the earlier uh, anime uh, series. So it's a, it's a little more palatable for modern tastes than some of those, uh, those earlier ones. Um, I will say the animation is, well, they did an HD remaster uh, a while back, which is really polished off. Uh, this was the, the studio's first all digital production and so the animation was kind of rough uh, in unoriginal release, but a lot of that's been polished off. So it's, uh, it, it looks pretty good. Um, budget is not massively huge, um, but it is... Uh, I've been re-watching a, a good chunk of it uh, uh, recently, and uh, it will look... Um, um, you can tell it's a TV show, but it doesn't look like cheap or anything. All right, moving on to Gundam 00. Um, another alternate timeline, so not based on Universal Century. But Double O um, also deals with more complicated topics, more serious topics, and more modern relevant topics. Because it is about Middle Eastern terrorism. Mm, which maybe I shouldn't mention on, on YouTube, I'm not, not, not realizing. 
Um, they, they, they may be a no-no. Um, but basically, um, the protagonist was an ex-child soldier for a you know, far future um, cell of bad guys in the Middle East. Um, so it's not directly connected to any of the current you know, things going on, but there's clearly a parallel. And of course this came out um, half a decade after um, uh, the 9-11 attacks. So there's a, a clear you know, connection there. And it is very much about kind of what, what, what is that doing? What, what is that trauma? What, what does that do to you? Um, and so it, it has a lot of power for that and dealing with the effects of, of, of that in not necessarily a negative way. Um, notably, the protagonist here is, um, that has clearly affected who he is, but he has chosen a path forward that, um, where he is trying to address that, right? So he's not locked down and destroyed by that, but it is a, an important part of who he is. Um, it also has high quality animation, so definitely they, they resolved a lot of the problems they were having earlier on with like Gundam Seed. And man, this is one of the better animated Gundam TV series, period. There's just a lot there to, to uh, enjoy and appreciate. Like this is a screenshot. This is not just like promotional artwork. This is kind of what the show actually looks like in one, in one, of, its, one of its better moments. But yeah, really impressive visually is uh, Gundam Double O. Um, and then finally, here's a weird one, but I'm really going to recommend this. And wow, this is going to be a short panel. Um, Gundam Build Fighters Try. So the Gundam Build franchise is based on the uh, the idea that Gunpla, like Gundam plastic model kits, are a thing in the world, in their world, and in their world you can take those plastic model kits and throw them into a an arcade and make the plastic model kits fight each other virtually. Um, and they kind of fight and, and, and do stuff. Now, the first Gundam Build Fighters uh, TV series is more of an homage to original Gundam, and actually all Gundam series, and has a lot of in-jokes about the Gundam uh, franchise. You can still watch it and enjoy it, but it is meant more as a love letter to Gundam, right? Um, a lot of in-jokes and references and, and, and so forth and so on. It has its own original story, so it's not just a pastiche of kind of Gundam, Gundam stuff, um, but it's meant more for that. Try is basically a shonen series set within that universe. It is much more structured, like a shonen series. Um, and I mean, look, it's it's a it's a shonen series, like just straight up. That is very much what it is um, about. All of these uh, characters coming together to to fight the good fight in these arcade things. Um, and so it is very approachable, especially for folks who. Um, might not find Gundams themselves and like the war story concept interesting. This is again just going into arcades and, and having fights in kind of a, a very near future modern world. So very approachable, very easy, you know, a great show for your younger sibling if they want to. Uh, you know, what's, what anime should I watch next? Give this one a try. They might really like it. it it'll appeal to folks who are more into that kind of uh, um, that kind of more shonen-y uh, storyline. And again, there are there's stuff going on. There's um, there's there's a whole plot, and it is obviously using Gundams from, you know, the Gundam franchise. So you'll recognize those. It's tied in, um, but you don't need to know anything about Gundam to really appreciate what's going on, to, to get the, the story, get the characters, all that stuff. Also, it's a much more light, lighter toned show. It has the standard kind of shonen angst of I want to be better and I'm I'm not as as good as I, I want to be, but uh, you know not a lot of explosions and death in Gundam Build Fighters Try. That's really not its its bag. Uh, it's more adolescents going to school, you know, and, and and doing that. So that is that, and again, highly recommended for 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 that uh, especially that younger crowd. Um, so if you want to find Gundam, there are a couple of different um, spots to do it. Um, if you want actual DVDs or Blu-rays, those are going to be on Amazon. Um, uh, there's a good amount of Gundam on Crunchyroll uh, streaming. So if you want to actually live stream uh, or actually want to stream Gundam uh, series, you can find a bunch of them on Crunchyroll. 
Uh, Gundam.info uh, is the official Gundam website. They also stream um, Gundam series in rotation. So s- different ones available at different times. So they'll be on there for a few months usually, um, cycling in and out as time goes on to get folks uh, uh, some availability to those shows. Um, that is that for that. 